Hi, Terry here. Welcome to another video. You know, there are a lot of myths and facts and misconceptions uh, and even some downright misinformation. Or of course, maybe that could fit in with the myths, but uh, about black powder and black powder firearms. Uh, some of these are kind of funny and some of them, when you think about it, kind of aren't so funny. And it kind of makes you wonder, how did these things even get started? Why do people believe them? And why are they still promoting some of these things? So I thought I might start a series of short videos where I'm going to put my opinion in on some of these. What the, what the myth or the fact is, uh, why something is, is misinformation, why it's just downright wrong, maybe, and why you shouldn't, shouldn't pay any attention to it. It's not going to be like um, a Mythbusters type series. I will test some of these out or really demonstrate just to show why they're either correct or incorrect. Um, some of them, though, like the first one I'm going to do today, really, it's already been busted so many times. It's a myth, just in case you didn't know. And it's already been tested and busted so many times over the years. It's amazing this thing is still alive. It's amazing it's got any life left in it. And yet there are people out there who are still saying this about black powder guns. So, um, since it's already been disproven, um, I'm just going to do a little explanation about why it's fake, why, why it's hooey, why did, this isn't real. Okay, so let's get started. The first one, and that is the pipe bomb muzzle loader. And uh, this myth goes that when you're loading a muzzle loading rifle or a mus musket, patched ball, and you put the powder in and then you're pushing the barrel down if you well pushing the ball down if you don't get that ball all the way down seated firmly up against the powder at the end of the barrel take it about down about halfway for example and stop when you shoot it you've created what is effectively a pipe bomb and it'll explode okay some people say will explode some people aren't quite so sure, uh, but they still believe in it. So they'll hedge their bets and say, can explode, which means it's um, not going to, but it can explode. Okay, one, it's a complete myth. This is an urban myth. It absolutely is not true. First, let's look at a pipe bomb. Well, actually, let's don't because that's illegal. Making a pipe bomb is illegal. So let's not look at a real one. Let's imagine that uh, I'm going to make a pipe bomb. So I go to the hardware store. I buy, say, a uh, steel pipe, about yay long, thread it on both ends, call the nipple. I get a couple of caps that fit it, thread them on. I'll okay, thread one cap on, drill a hole in the other, put some explosive down it, let's say some gunpowder, thread the other cap on, stick a fuse down the hole, maybe seal it up with a little wax if I want to do a really good job. Okay, when that fuse burns down into the powder, here's what happens. That powder starts burning, producing gas. The gas builds up as a pressure because there's really nowhere for it to go. Yeah, it can vent through the little hole that I drilled for the fuse, and some of it will, but it's just, it's building up pressure too fast to vent enough. It can't vent quickly enough through that little hole. And what this gas is doing is it builds up pressure. It's exerting force evenly in all directions with equal force. And it will keep doing that until the weakest point in that assembly fails. And that's usually gonna be the seam because water pipe is usually low pressure, welded seamed water pipe. And what that means is they take a flat piece of, of, of steel, heat it up nice and hot, wrap it around a little steel mandrel, and then they weld down the seam. Okay, what if we take one of those caps off and we just stick a cork in the end of it. Put the same few ounces of powder in it, put a cork on it, light it. Now what's gonna happen? Well, when the powder burns, it's just gonna blow the cork out, right? Just gonna make a loud bang, puff of smoke and blow the cork out. Everybody knows that, duh. Why? Why does the thing explode? Because the weakest point in that assembly is now the cork. That cork is just barely stuck. Even if you hammer it down with your fist, that cork's just barely stuck on there. And that gas pressure is going to build up 
fast enough to dislodge that cork and blow it out long before that pipe explodes. Okay, so why doesn't that same thing happen when we create the same situation inside a gun barrel by pushing a ball just halfway down? Think about this. That ball is being held in there with only a little bit of friction between the ball, the patch, and the barrel. If you took the barrel out, unscrewed the breech plug, you could take a wooden dowel and you could just push that ball out very easily. A couple of pounds of force, that's all it takes. Okay, so we've got our barrel, we've got our ball pushed about halfway down, pull the trigger, the gunpowder starts burning. What happens? Just like in the pipe, the expanding gas exerts pressure evenly in all directions inside that barrel. Even though there's an air space in it, all that gas is going to do is just compress the air. Air is just air. It's not explosive. So as the gas expands, it's going to compress the air. The air is actually going to effectively become part of the expanding gas. And that gas is going to be pushing equally in all directions. And the weakest part of that assembly is the ball. The ball is going to fail first, meaning the, its resistance to the pressure through friction is going to fail first, and the ball is going to start moving down the barrel. And as it moves down the barrel, the expanding gas will expand even more. It's going to push even harder against that ball. In fact, it's going to push so hard against it, it's going to flatten it out a little bit so it presses into the grooves and it's going to start spinning. And that's going to continue until the ball exits the end of the barrel, in which case the remainder of the gas is going to discharge harmlessly out the barrel and send the ball down range. Well, isn't that exactly what happens if we seat the ball all the way down against the powder? Yes, it doesn't matter where in that barrel the ball is. The same powder is going to burn with the same pressure curve. It's going to generate the same pressures in the same directions. The weak point is still going to be the resistance of the ball through friction, which is going to fail first, and the ball is going to start moving before anything else does. Okay? The gun barrel is not going to explode. It only takes a couple of pounds of force to get that ball moving. That barrel is designed to withstand several thousands of pounds of force. I'm not saying these barrels can't explode. You um, you put some smokeless powder down it, and it doesn't matter even if you seat the ball properly. That changes the equation because this barrel is formulated, hardened, and tempered for use with the black powder pressure curve. Also a safety margin. Smokeless powder has a very different pressure curve, and it's going to build up a lot of pressure very quickly and it could very easily cause this barrel to explode. So I'm not saying these barrels can't explode, they very easily can. But on Mythbusters, they even welded a steel bolt down the end of a barrel. And you know what happened when they fired it? Blew the bolt out and split the end of the barrel open. And that's all that happened. So this idea about the exploding barrel, it, re <laughs> it really reminds me of a Bugs Bunny cartoon. You know, remember um, Elmer Fudd jumps out on Bugs Bunny with a shotgun, ha ha, and Bugs sticks his finger into the barrel, and uh, Elmer Fudd pulls the trigger and the breech blows up in his face. It's a cartoon. What would really happen? Bugs would lose a finger. <laughs> That's all that would happen. <sighs> so. If you're one of these people who insist on continuing to believe this myth of the pipe bomb muzzle loading barrel, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but um, physics is against you. And before you start insisting that you saw it happen, all right, be prepared to present some verifiable document evidence. Coroner's report, police report, sheriff's report. Um, hospital ER report, newspaper account. Let's see some facts, okay? Proving it. And no, watching a YouTube video where a rifle barrel exploded is not proof because, and this may come as a surprise to some people, 
but some YouTube videos are fake. Really? Thanks for watching. See you next time.